Hello and welcome to a new edition of Design for the Times. I'm your host, Richard Christopher Scuderi. Well, I'm very happy to be back in the studio. You know, uh, because of COVID, we've been uh, off for quite a while and I was so afraid we wouldn't be returning to PCTV, kind of my home and my little clubhouse here as I've said to many of her guests. I have a new guest. She's not new to me, but she's certainly new to our program. Her name is Martha Klink, and she's a local resident in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. Welcome to the program. Thank you. So Martha, uh, I thought it was so appropriate that we start season three with Martha because Martha is a longtime resident of Princeton, New Jersey. She knows a lot about Princeton, the history, the architecture. In fact, I often go to her as a resource when I have questions about uh, Princeton, New Jersey. So I know you're not, you weren't born in Princeton. You didn't grow up in uh, Princeton. What brought you to Princeton and how long ago was that? Um, that was 50 years ago. Wow. And um, I I married someone that was born and raised in Princeton. Okay. So um, that's what had me move here. Now, are you in the house that you're in now 50 years ago? Were you in a different house and then moved to this house? Yes. So where did you start off in Princeton we when you start, moved? I started off right in town on okay. Linden Lane. Now, that must be a <laughs> wonderful if you didn't have children and left to be able to, like, run out and have a drink or go to dinner or yes, something. Yes, wonderful, wonderful place to live. Mm. And then when we had children, we moved to um, Varsity Avenue. Avenue. Okay. And then from there we moved to Princeton Junction. Okay. And um, and then which was near the high school. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, then I moved back to Princeton, mm -hmm. and I'm on uh, Manor Avenue. So the house that you're in now, I would say, and and I saw it ten years yeah. ago, or maybe more than ten right. years ago, and I said to myself. This is the perfect house for a retired person. No question. It is quintessentially the perfect house. Now, not a new house built in like 1952, we think. Right. So not a, not a new house, but the rooms are all spacious. First of all, it's a ranch. Right. And people have gotten away from ranches not because they're not a good house, because builders, it's so much cheaper to build up than right. it is to build out. Right. So the ranch is a perfect house for somebody who's retired. Everything in your house is on one level. Absolutely. You have plenty of light. Mm -hmm. You have a living room space, a separate dining room space, a big family room space, right. an eat-in kitchen, and then a private wing for bedrooms. Right. No better setup. It's, it's perfect. Everything right. is on one level. Well, on one level, yeah. but no small rooms. Right. And certainly if you had a party, it's not necessarily open concept, but the rooms flow. So Absolutely. you can go yes. from room to room. Right. What attracted you to the house? Be for all those reasons, right. you know, it was small and uh, on one level, right. uh, three bedrooms, and um, and it's a short walk to the train station. So, when you bought the house, now, so what was it actually? How many, what year did you move into this house that you're at now? Uh, two thousand and one. So in two thousand and one, when you bought that house, is there anything that you had to do to it to get it to where where it was until? I picked up so many years later. No, the person before me had uh, remodeled the kitchen mm -hmm. and kind of painted everything. Sure. But oh, and had all the hardwood floors uh, refinished. So you could just—it was just a clean Absolutely. property you could move yes. in. Maybe yeah. we can put up the first image and we can talk about uh, what we started with. So this is the living room, and typically a 1952 uh, house would have the biggest room be the living room because not many houses, although yours did, had a family room. So we're looking at the 1952. 52 living room that you moved in in uh, 2001. We have sort of a neutral, sort of a pale yellow, it looks like, maybe a linen or a pale yellow paint color. We have a center fireplace, which you absolutely hated. <laughs> Uh, and we have a long room. It's a generous room, but it's it's a little bit on the long side, so that sometimes is difficult to place furniture. Now, I see you have some chairs around and so on. Did you find it this was hard to place furniture because there were a lot of cut-ins? It was very difficult because mm. there was there were so many uh, entrances to the kitchen, and then that big area going into the dining room. Right, so it limits placement yes, of furniture. It does. I always say to um, to architects. Think about where you place your windows in the room. Right. Think about where you're placing, because you're placing furniture. It's a box, right? right. That's basically a rectangular yeah. box. But we often have yeah. these problems. And also, I think because the room is long, you have the issue that the window is not 
center in the room. The right. fireplace is center, which is great, right. but the window isn't. Right. So you want to center everything kind of around the fireplace, but often that can be difficult in a room that's uh, rectangular. Now, my question to you is, were you using this room a lot before we renovated it? Uh, no. And why is that? Because I would read and do everything in the TV room. Right, it was, right, right. Because this just didn't, it wasn't cohesive. Right, right, and it was hard to place yeah. things. So let's take a look at the after shot. We're not completely after, but uh, we, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so that's that same room. Now, what's the first thing that you could even notice yourself on the monitor What about the room? It looks, it looks bigger, doesn't it? It looks much bigger. It looks physically bigger. The first thing we addressed in this room, which I thought came out spectacular, mm -hmm. is we wanted to do a fireplace makeover. And one of the things that I wanted to do, because we only have, we don't have nine foot ceilings, is to give the place some, some height. So visually taking your existing fireplace, taking the veneer off, starting fresh, and create something that went to the very top, I think brought your eye to the top. Right. And that's always a good idea when you have less than nine foot ceilings to do that. Mm -hmm. That will instantly make the place look newer. The second thing we did in that space to create the look of it being a more updated and, and taller is we created a crown molding and painted it out in a white semi-gloss finish. So you can, you can barely see in the shot, but if you take a look at it, you can see that there's a little sheen coming off the crown molding. Again, it draws your eye up. The third thing that I try to do is redistribute the furniture in the space. And I think that this, that makes this room seem a lot more um, functional. Right. Because uh, you really can have 10 people sit in this room now. It's big enough. Now, I, wasn't, I did the fireplace over, and we'll talk about the beam, which is its own <laughs> story in a minute. Um, but you had put in, or the previous owner had put in, uh, from the original fireplace to a gas fireplace? Uh, I did that when you I, did that when I first moved in. I have never seen it. You could probably cook a turkey in that. That is the <laughs> hottest. That is the, it gave the most power. You could probably uh, heat your whole house with yeah. that. Yes. But in a winter month, this and this look, it's still elegant, but what I try to achieve here or achieve for you here is something that was casually elegant, something yes. that it was still elegant, but it was approachable. Right. Whereas I think in the before picture, it wasn't approachable. In this, uh, in this project, I, I'm a big fan of the Benjamin Moore uh, color scheme. So we used, uh, I believe we used um, Wyndham, right? We used yes. Wyndham, Wyndham, Wyndham Gray, Gray, which is really nice. It has a slight blue to the undertones, but it's a really nice light gray. We used a, um, a nice um, ceiling paint. I, I like to use a specially formulated ceiling paint, but in the color of the trim, but with different finishes. So what I'm trying to say, and this really, it's the little things that designers do that you don't know why a room looks good. Right. These are the reasons. If you make the paint for your trim and your ceiling the same physical color, it's more cohesive, it right. draws itself together. But you'd never make them the same formula. So the crown molding is that super white because when you have a light color wall, if you do regular white, there's not that much contrast. Right. But when you do super white, there's a little bit more contrast. We do that in semi-gloss so it reflects, show, so it shows the best of itself. Mm -hmm. Now in the ceiling, a 1952 ceiling is never going to be perfect. Right. So in that case, we still do, we do super white as the color, but we do it in a ceiling paint, which is absolutely flat, not even okay. matte. It's flat. When a paint is flat, it hides shadows and imperfections. So that's what you, you know, that's really right. helpful in that space. The other thing that I want to talk about, which is something that I fight with people that have older homes, is that you allowed me to put recessed lights in the uh, ceiling. Did you have second thoughts about that in the beginning before you did it? Uh, not at all, because the way the living room was, it was difficult to, where do you put the lighting, and right, that right. just kind of eliminated, eliminated that, that. that problem. Some people are purists and feel that when a house was built, they did a little lamp light yeah. down and they want to keep with that. I don't think that ruined the integrity of the room. You know, today yeah. they're very small. In fact, right. the new um, lights are LED. The new mm -hmm. uh, lights that they have that are the pot lights are um, LED. They're small. The bulb is the whole thing. 
They're very inexpensive to run, mm -hmm. and they allow you just to enjoy a room that has a less than nine foot ceiling right. and not take away from it by having a fixture that comes down or lamp light that's all over the place. So I think the result here is quite, um, a quite uh, nice. We're not quite finished yet. We have window treatments that didn't make the segment, of course. But even without it, it has a wonderful updated. If I saw this uh, shot, I would think the house was you know, built much, much later and much newer just by um, some of the things we did structurally. And that's the thing with the house. People don't realize you can turn anything into anything. Bring me a picture, bring me your ideas. We really can turn anything into anything. I love some of the things that we did in the space. We kept, I like a monochromatic palette. So we keep, we keep uh, the walls and the sofas neutral and similar in tone, which also makes the space seem wider. We used a light color rug here that had silk in it. I don't know if you can barely see, but there's some sheen to the rug. If we used a dark rug, you have to be careful when you place rugs in spaces because a rug can actually shrink a room or bring it in. Yeah. In this case, the rug made the room look wider because we went with a light color rug. And I love the square U configuration we did. A square U really optimizes, especially when it comes off a fireplace or a focal point, it optimizes the amount of seating that you can have in each space. We've kind of centered that space. We have the height now of the um, fireplace. Now what we did here is a stack stone and it was a combination of grays and tans, very natural looking with a pure white grout. Now if you didn't know, you'd think that that was there from the beginning, right? Yes, absolutely. It looks like it was stone that mm -hmm. was from the property, but they've come so far with tile and stone to make surfaces that are really unbelievably, um, it's thin. Remember how thin yes. it was? Uh, and then we created a hearth here. We, we got a beautiful uh, piece of stone mm -hmm. and we created a hearth in the space. So I think it really transformed the space. But the thing I'm most interested in sharing with you is the uh, mantle. Yes. Now the mantle comes from a company uh, that I use in uh, Hunterdon County that takes old barn timbers. Instead of getting rid of them, they save them. And this is a preserved uh, timber from a barn, and I just think it, it, it doesn't make it too rustic, but it brings something to the stone, don't yeah. you think? It brings it all together. Yes. And although we have uh, you know alternating surfaces of wood and fabric and some metal, I think it comes together um, awfully nicely in the space. One of the other things that we did, which is different, which is also on trend in the space, is that our coffee tables are actually two individual coffee yeah. tables that can move modular pieces of furniture. You're going to see happening more and more. There's a return to nest of tables. Mm -hmm. The returns to things that when you have company, you can break them up, right. open up the space. Uh, perfect. They look perfectly as one, but they separate and interesting. So let's talk, I think the next one is a dining room. Let's talk about the dining room shot. This was the before dining room. <laughs> now, I'm not going to heckle you too much, but did you put up that wallpaper? Tell I, the truth. I did not. Really? I, I, that was brand new when okay. I moved in. So there is nothing wrong with this room. It's a nice proportionate <laughs> room for the time. Um, it did have a chair rail, which is nice. It had a beautiful, which we kept. It had a beautiful um, china cabinet. It has a beautiful mahogany table and four nice chairs. But the room, the room was ready for an update. It yes. was classic, yeah. but even over time, I tell people, even traditional becomes dated. And now I thought, you right. know, you did traditional. Oh, yeah. wow, you're done. <laughs> you're not, right? Because yes. that became dated. Right. So let's take a look at the after and how much we changed the space. There's the after. It looks like you moved. Right. So we did a lot. Let's talk about a lot what we what we did to this uh, space to change it so much because we in fact did not change any of the furniture. We only added to the furniture. Right. So because we were limited for, with the size of the room, the furniture had to stay in the same space. That was fine. That worked. Your dining room is a little unusual because it's a pass-through right. and you see into your family room where the window is. So I wanted to be um, cohesive with how we did things. But we kept your classic table and chairs. But what I wanted to give you was some gorgeous end chairs. Uh, and we gave you some really nice end chairs here that were a tapestry in a blue and a sort of a, a, a yellowy gold and a little bit of gray. And then we changed out your rug that had the same elements in the rug only with silk in it. Yeah. So it was sort of lighter in the space. Of course, we um, maybe if we go to the next shot, we can see some of the details a little bit more. Well, that was a china cabinet. Right. I redid your china cabinet. 
Do not store things in your china <laughs> cabinet, which you never did. Um, create them, bring them out. And I wanted to bring the yellow out because you, for you, yellow and gray is a very right. big part of who yeah. you are in your yeah. palette. Let's go to the next dining room picture. I think we might have one I'm looking for. Those are some of the fabrics. In the adjoining room, we're using two fabrics, the family room for window treatments. We're using the one on the left, uh, which is a linen with some of the wonderful gray in it. And then we have some panels that we're also using with the gray and the yellow, which is very much yeah. part of the look. Let's go to the next shot. Okay, so this is what I wanted to get to. We added tons of character mm -hmm. in your dining room by uh, working with your existing chair rail and then creating a mock look with raised panel molding. Mm -hmm. We kept the bottom in a neutral matte white finish, and then we created beautiful boxes, which we did with mm -hmm. math and our right. eye, and went around the space and made the bottom of the space seem like you had a raised panel molding. And there is that chair again. We just added two beautifully done chairs. You know, it would be too much to have all those chairs that right. way. Yeah. But against the white, it really brought everything together. And then I brought in a wonderful, wonderful, uh, real grass cloth, which will I promise you will never go out of style. <laughs> from Pacific Designs, one of my favorite purveyors in real grass cloth. It was difficult to get during pandemic. We waited a long time for it. But look at the striations of, of color that you see there. Look at the depth of the color. Mm -hmm. No individual paint could give you that. Right. It brought level to the surface. We also put crown molding into the space and we ch took out the dining room Williamsburg brass chandelier mm -hmm. and brought in a drum yep. fixture. Yeah. What's nice about using a drum fixture or something that has a shade on it, it a dining room is because it makes the light go down mm -hmm. on the table. You don't want to illuminate the ceiling, right. you want to illuminate the table. Okay. Why don't we go on to uh, the next photo? Okay, so this is the adjoining family room. And my question to you is for a house that was built in 1952, this is a very big room. Do you think this is part of the original plan? No, um, the person. Uh, prior to me, mm -hmm. uh, that was a screened-in porch in the back. Oh, well, you know, that would make sense. A big screened-in porch. Yes, and so they closed it in and, and put heating and everything, so it's a year-round. Right. And this community. is the room where you spend most of your time. Well, it was before, yes, right? Yes, yes. So it has beautiful furniture yeah. and white and gray goes mm -hmm. with the rest of the house. But I kind of I kind of teased you into doing <laughs> stuff, and it started with these simple pillows. I love beautiful pillows. I love very neutral surfaces, but I love beautiful pillows. And I was picking pillows for my store. I have a little boutique store in Ringo's, New Jersey, um, at 176 Route 202. Mm -hmm. 31 Ringo's, which I share with uh, Flemington Fan and Lighting, and I was looking for pillows for my store, and I saw these with the gray and the yellow. They're so quint they were they're quintessentially you. That's you, right? If I could say um, that's a yes, pattern, that's yes. you. And I brought them, and I and I tricked you into doing <laughs> that. I think because when you saw them, you said, "Oh my God, I have to have yeah. them." And that led us to do a little bit of a window treatment. Now, that's not finished yet. We didn't have it in time for the broadcast today. But that's the fabric we're using, that gorgeous um, linen fabric and the yellow with the gray. And that's nice because even though you don't have a window right. in your uh, dining room, that carries through. Yes. And yellow carries more than any other color. Do you know why they switched? If you notice when you see a new fire engine, what color is it usually now? Yellow. Yellow. Not red anymore because they found that from a distance, yellow is the single most, I don't know what the word is, it's the most eye-catching yeah, color from a distance. Okay. And that's all you needed in yeah. a room that was basically neutral white, that little pop of yeah. yellow mm -hmm. made that so elegant and sort of yeah. balanced from end to end with your space. Of course, a little flower arrangement there. <laughs> with using your existing furniture, transform the world. Uh, yes. Why don't we go on to the next, uh, Okay, so there's a shot of how the rooms uh, kind of work together. I tried to make the, the, uh, the wallpaper here work off the wood tones of the floor and see from, from room to room we're carrying colors. So you have the beautiful sort of nautical look of the fabric on the chair with the very uh, um, the same tone of blue, but with the uh, chair fabric, which was much more sophisticated, like a tapestry, but the wall color isn't there too. And it's, they, they really seem seamless, these two rooms, don't they? They do. Again, they do. for the look that most people are looking for yeah. these days, which is casually elegant. You see the molding, it's not pretentious, but it brings things up. And also the crown molding, 
when you have some sort of a, a window treatment, I'm sorry, when you have a wall treatment like this grass paper, just capping it off, not going to the ceiling with it, but capping it off right. with a little bit of crown molding really turns things around as well. Um, I like light color rugs. I like rugs that have a little bit of silk in them. But I also don't like to put too much rug. Do you ever go into a ha house and it's covered, the floors are covered by rug? I want to have a good amount of um, wood showing. And the rule of thumb for people, two things that I'll try to uh, teach our, um, our uh, viewers today, is one is when you, some of the mistakes that people make in a dining room, is you want your, bit, your rug big enough that when you pull your head chair out, okay. it is still on the rug. So that's a good uh, thing of advice. The second thing is that people hang their chandeliers too high in a dining room. You want to hang from the top of your table to the bottom of your, your chandelier, somewhere between, based upon the height of your room, right. 30 to 36 inches. Okay. So that's a good parameter when you're hanging your chandelier to get your proportions right. Now it'll adjust to based, based upon how high your ceiling right. is, but you want that sort of proportion from chandelier to table. Right. And also, again, about your, uh, your uh, china cabinet, if you have a china cabinet, decorate it. Use it as part of the room. It's part of the architecture yeah. of the room. Often there is lights in a china cabinet, right. which is good. I see a lot of people getting rid of their china cabinets because they think they're dated. But here's the problem. In a dining room, which tends to be sometimes a smaller room, you have what? One central light. Right. You don't have any other lights yeah. in the room. A china cabinet has a practical purpose besides storage. It illuminates that room, and at night right. it's sort of a glow. Right. So otherwise, you often only have one light. Not many people, unless you have a brand new house, right. have recessed lights around right. it or sconces. And sconces don't give a lot of light off. Right. So there are, uh, there's a nice reason for that. I don't know if we have any more shots left. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, what do we have next? Okay, so a little, little out on the last one to look at. I wanted to do something uh, really nice because your, your sort of signature style is gray and yellow and your, your ranch is gray with right. black shutters and you had a white front door. Let's paint our doors. Nothing makes your house look newer than a fresh coat of paint on your front door. So I was thinking about the gray house with the, with the black shutters what is everybody probably going to do red? I don't want to do red. You're not yeah. a red person. Yeah. So I said, let's pick another color that will work with the interior of the house. Because I always believe what you, should, what you have outside should be a slight preview of what you're going to have on the inside. So I pulled up some wonderful yellows. And you have to be very careful with the yellows. These yellows that I put on your existing door are sort of like a kind of a custard color yellow, if I could say. Right. They're warm. Mm. And uh, so we found one that we liked a lot. We're not going to tell you. Maybe <laughs> in a future show we'll tell you. But let's go to the last shot, which is sort of my inspiration. Look at that. Now, those of you, I bet you many people would have never thought of a yellow door. Would you have thought of a yellow door? Tell the truth. Would you have thought of a yellow no, door? No, Most people, they think of a front door, they think of what? White, black, or red? Right. You don't think of sort of a royal blue or a yes. lavender or so on. But a front door, and your, your lot is, is, is far from the road. Right. Something like that, again, draws the eye. It gives you a preview of what you're going to have in your space. And again, you're not using a lot of the real estate. You're just using a, just the door itself, not the trim, right. not the molding, not the surround. But it brings beautiful, beautiful color and light to a space. Now, your house in particular, you don't have a portico. It doesn't jut out in the right. front. You can create the drama just with simple paint. Right. Yeah. The other thing that we're going to try in this house is that we're going to paint the back of your door the same color as the front. And that's something that's kind of trending now uh, for 2021, and I think it'll go on for a long time. Most people, if they were going to pick a, a paint color for their front door that was a little bit of shocking, they'd make the back yeah. just be white. Right. I'm starting to see, and I've done it twice now, where I paint the back of the door the same color as the front of the door. And one of the reasons I do that is because if we were doing if we were doing your house when you first moved in in 2001, the paint colors would be a lot darker. Right. I probably would have made your dining room a dark color right. on top. Your living room would be a darker color, and they would go from room to room as in yeah. a different color. So it didn't, it didn't matter. The white was sort of a break. The opposite happened. What's happening now is people are painting their color either uh, their uh, walls off-white 
or a very light gray. We're even getting rid of the grays. We're going towards pure grays, as right. you did, from room to room. And every room is a very, very light color. So when you have every room a very light color and you have super white on the ceiling, super white on the walls, you need those pops. Yeah. Now, voids are always good in a room. You know, I think voids are as beautiful as space. Right. They allow you to uh, see the room and its architecture. But at the same time, you need pops when you have an all-neutral palette eating pops. So something like coming into your hallway from the other part of the house and having that pop of yellow really makes a difference and yes. really works well yeah. in the way decorating has happened. When we went shopping for furniture, what did you notice in trends? Now, we bought a lot of our furniture from Bassett in Princeton, right. which really does quality pieces. But what did you notice when you shopped of how furniture looked? Did you notice anything that was different than when you had looked for furniture before? No, not, I just found that um, it, it was very uh, plain. Yes, yes. right? Yeah. And I would say the same thing. I had to get used to the new look where you look. You don't see a lot of color. You go into showrooms. Everything's white, off white, or gray. It's simple. It's right. simple. And what I have to do to most people, but you, you, you liked things streamlined. Yeah. For most people, I have to undecorate and that in itself could make a space look yeah. more updated less stuff yeah. not stuff on mm. the floor if you do accents um, do a couple of yeah. them bigger pieces as accents but maybe just three of them right. not collections of yeah. stuff all yeah. over the place and cleaner lines right right yeah when I when I saw the difference in Ethan Allen and um, and um, Bassett and some of the other higher-end furniture companies I just thought I see a sea of white that's why it's very important now to work with a designer because I think it's confusing to keep things minimal but also to make them beautiful. Exactly. Because everything has yeah. changed balance a little right. bit. So we have about a minute and a half left, um, a little bit less than that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the weirdest thing that <laughs> happened in Princeton. I know that people will identify it. What happened this summer is we had the, um, the bugs that come out of the ground. Oh, Cicadas. Cicadas. I used to say John Cicada <laughs> last time that's what happened. I don't know what happened in Princeton, but when I would come to your street when we were working this summer, when did they start coming out, the, the cicadas? Um, they were there in June. Right. Most of June, Ju and they were gone by July. July. About six weeks. For those of you in Princeton, I don't know what it was <laughs> with that beautiful town, but it echoed as if there was electricity going on. Wasn't it wild? Yes. We had a short window when my guys were working that. Every time it came there, it was like, I was going to say, come stay at my house. <laughs> It was crazy, but then it was just gone, like, right? As, yeah, as they were about six weeks, yeah. six weeks. That, uh, well, to live in Princeton, I would, I would take that <laughs> once every 17 years because you have so much at your fingertips. The change of season is lovely where you yes. are. You can walk to the train station, right. and you really, truly have a, a lovely house. I thank you and, for and trusting me. And I thank you me. for making it lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I, it was easy because I knew your vision. And the one thing that the designer always wants to be, if you work with a designer, Listen to what your client says. Listen to their taste. Our job is to be a catalyst to bring out the best of you. Well, I'm so happy to be back. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next episode of Designed for the Times. <laughs>